Good evening guys and welcome back to my channel. Um I was gonna video record this tomorrow, but I figured I'll do it for tonight's um vlog and tomorrow we'll probably do um some more resin because I have my resin came in for um me to do a a puzzle set. A puzzle set. <laughs> A sticker set of Hello Kitty for a customer. Someone else put in order for Princess Tiana. So I'm trying to hunt down stickers for that. And then I want to do a set for my mom too. So we'll see. But in the meantime, um, tonight we're going to go back into bullying. Um, so where we left off last time, I was telling you about the point where I had reached wanting to commit suicide. Um, I was, it was in of fourth grade going into fifth grade. And there was a lot of mixed emotions, confusion. I felt alone. Um, my one friend Dawn had moved away years ago. Um, me and my sister weren't exactly getting along. So I, there was no one I could confide to or go running to for help. I didn't want to bother bother my mom, who I felt like my hand, her hands were full already with my brothers, and I didn't want to cause her trouble. So I don't know where it eventually got into my head to kill myself, but it got there. And my dad, on his work truck, had tons of cords because he his job was putting up curtains in um, housing. And he worked for JCPenney's for years doing that. Made good money, too. But um, I decided I was going to take the cord that, you know, you pull your curtains up and down with. And I was going to take it to school. And so at school... Since I was a good student and I stayed out of trouble um, and I seemed to fly through my work quickly, I would always have a book from the library in the school and I would read that book quickly in class and then use that as an excuse to wander around the school um, to go drop back <laughs> the book in the library. Well, my plan that day was instead of just wander around the school for like 15 minutes and then take myself back to class I decided I was going to go up into what I called the castle because that school man <laughs> it was huge marble school and it reminded me of a castle and there were towers there and if you knew the way around in the very old <laughs> old 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 building you can get up pretty high into the towers. And um, there was rasters up there. And my plan was to take one of the ropes, wrap it around the wrappers, and string myself up and hang myself. And I knew it would be a long time before someone might be maybe find me. That was my plan. My first best friend that I ever met, Shakia. Saved me that day. I had my rope. We went to school. And since it was the end of close to the end of the year, we weren't really doing school work. We were some work in between. Test was over and we were just really waiting for summer to start. And um we were doing like little movies in the classroom. And I don't remember what movie we were on, but I was in the class. I was trying to figure out how I was going to get out of this movie and go do what I wanted to do. And Kia walked in and sat next to me. And she started talking to me about this movie. And it was like, this person is talking to me. No one ever talks to me. I'm not allowed to be talked to. Because remember I told you, the other girl, Kia, <laughs> Shakia. Evil Shakia made sure that I wasn't spoken to. 
all these years. So, the only other person who defied Shakia was um, Michael. He had a little, his hair was buzz cut down straight. And he had a ponytail. I remember he had a ponytail. Michael was always protecting me from any bully. And I think he he was my protector for first and second grade. And then he was gone. But anyway, um, back to the story. Um, by Kia talking to me, she saved me. And I tell her that every year, I tell her that you are my savior. At some point every year, I tell her, you have no idea how much you saved me. Because I was definitely going to end my life. Somehow, some way. And just by you talking to me helped me. So, um, found out we kind of lived close to each other. And she would come over, hang out over my grandma's house. And we developed a pretty good bond, pretty big bond. <laughs> We're still friends. We're still friends, still best friends. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I shout out her her fashion stuff all the time. Um, even though she was there to to make going to school easier, I still had to deal with Marbella back home, and Marbella continued to torture me. Until I think I was about 10. 10 or 11. I think it was 10. I think I was 10 when I finally stood up to her. My hair was my world, my everything. It still is my, my world, my everything. I'm going through that. Live your hair, let it be. <laughs> Face in life. But it was always straight. It was past my shoulders. I love my hair. And at the end of our block was the sand lot. And she knew that I loved my hair. And so she got my sneaker off of my foot and poured my hair, poured the sand in my hair. And I freaked out. You know, when all running all the way down to the end of the block and up the steps, past my sister and her boyfriend on the steps. And my fella came chasing behind me. And my other friend Angie there, who's also still friends with me, who's younger than us, didn't quite know how to do or what to do to help. She 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 couldn't intervene. Um and Marvella went to go do something again to my hair and I blacked out. <laughs> when I came to I had her by her head and I was slamming it into the banister and they my sister pulled my mom came outside to pull me off of Marbella and I'm stream, crying and I'm screaming and my mom brings me in the house after that Marbella didn't bother me anymore I avoided her like the plague I then met my best friend, um, Lily, who moved the next door. And when I met Lily, Marbella became friends with those people in the household, of course, including Lily. And I just avoided, whenever she was there, I just avoided her. <laughs> that was my thing. I just avoided her at all costs. And eventually, as I got older... She started to try to be my friend, but that pain ran too deep, and I couldn't, I couldn't see past that. She was one of the reasons why I had wanted to commit suicide, and I just, I couldn't. Um, so 
the series is only going to be two videos. This is the second video. And I plan to move on and let go. I am forgiving Marvella. And I am moving forward. And I want, once again, if you are being bullied or if you're going through bullying, reach out to someone, talk to someone. I keep telling people all the time, you're never too young to not think about suicide. Don't ever think that your child is too young and would never think about it. Because they do. Um, not much more I can say. Thank you for listening. And I hope that in some way, if you do feel lost or you need help, you can always reach out to me. <laughs> Anonymous message, I don't care. I will listen to you and I'll be that friend that you need. Because there's always going to be someone who's willing to listen if you're willing to let them in. But, um... Thank you for listening and watching. And we will do happier videos for the rest of the remainder of this week. Um, I will be doing another one where you are touching more so on how I show my love for my, my daughter, Emma Avalon, who I lost a couple years back. And that's coming up soon. So... At the same time, you'll be learning my more religious path when I do that. And for the third time, thank you for watching. Love you guys. Happy Vlogmas. And I will see you tomorrow. Mwah.